This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with Macklin's View Marbella. We're in Manchester here today to announce Scott Quigg versus Kiko Martinez on July 18th. You get everywhere. You get everywhere. I'm still, Vegas. I'm still effed from Vegas, man. You're a machine. Well, it's like, there's been nothing to you. We're machines, oh. man. We don't need sleep. Sleep but It's all right for people like you. Because you, you get free holiday, right? Oh, my God. You get free holiday. You walked about the MGM Grand. But you're out yeah. of order. You checked to a couple of fires. You're out of order. We, and then we, you go home. We went from six o'clock in the morning every day working till late at night. It was a lot. It was. It sounds glamorous, but it ain't all that. No, do you know what? <coughs> I'll and just. Beyonce I'll kept just standing in the way, so I couldn't see much. Can I just ask you a question? <laughs> can I just ask you a question? <laughs> did you meet Fifty Cent? He was in the press room. Yeah, but did you meet him? No, Glenn met him and didn't know who he was. He said, I met that rapper, what's two, his name? One, 50 two. Pence, I met him upstairs. I went, stop, <laughs> stop, Glenn, stop, man, stop. He had his picture taken one, with him. Two, one, two. And then, just before, Jamie Foxx was doing a test on the, uh, one, two, one, to two. sing the national anthem. Bad. Glenn was like a little giddy girl. Can I have a picture, please? I was trying to stay all cool in that. Like, yeah, what's up, Beyonce what's up Curtis? Me, and what's up, Curtis? Why, Beyonce clocked me, and the reason why she clocked me, I know she clocked me, is because security had me escorted out of the place. She was so there. She, she was saying, security, get that mad ass. No, she watched one of your uh, Cruiserweight World Title fights. Yeah, probably. Probably yeah. the Leon one. Definitely oh watched God, it. Keep that dog. Definitely. Boy, and and Solange watched it as well. <laughs> no, she didn't clock me. She did. But it's a good night. It's a good night. But anyway, what? Just, uh, I spoke to you for a couple of minutes after, but the whole Mayweather, Pacquiao, euphoria kind of... A little bit went flat, didn't it? Yeah, it did, but you know what? You can't blame Mayweather for being so good. He was just shut him out. Pacquiao performed under par. Pacquiao had an operation that night on his shoulder. So those of you that think it was rubbish, that he had, didn't have a shoulder problem, he did. Uh, and he got it dealt with. Uh, he had an operation that night. I don't know what he's going to do from now, but the chance... I, I can understand where Pacquiao was coming from. If he, he'd have pulled out and it took, the, took him five years to make the fight again, to make the fight, I can mm. understand him saying, look, We've got to cancel this. We can't. We can't do this fight. So I can understand him still going through with it. I'd have done it. Who's going to be number forty-nine? <coughs> I think it's going to be Adrian Broner. Do you? Yeah. You also said Pacquiao would beat no, Mayweather. No, 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 so trust me, trust everyone, trust me. listen to Johnny Nelson. No, I, no problem. Adrian Broner. I know right, things, okay. man. Well, what do you think about this then, right? So Mayweather has his number forty-nine yeah. fight in September. Showtime deals over, and then he retires, and then next year. Massive announcement. Mayweather comes back for his 50th fight to beat Rocky Marciano's record. Yeah. What do you reckon? Is that going to happen? Uh, yeah. Why would he stop at 49? Saying I'm retiring after 49. Why would he do that? When did you it's retire? After what? After about 60 something fights. <laughs> 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 after about 60 something fights. But that, well, not, it's not about me. Just forget about that. Okay. <laughs> right, let's move away from Vegas anyway. We're back to reality here. Yeah. Uh, July 18th. Uh, Talking to Eddie Hearn, obviously he's got a few more fights to announce on this card. But um, Kiko Martinez is obviously we know the facts about Martinez. Obviously he's been beaten by Frampton twice, but in the, between that he won a world title. And you know what does Martinez come here to offer as an opponent to Quig? Clearly, this you know they're trying to say uh, it's a, this is going to be a tough fight for for Scott Quigg and, and it's a risky one. I actually think Scott Quigg's a world champion, so therefore he should deal with Kiko Martinez like Frampton did. Uh, uh, Kiko Martinez isn't washed up, he's not a, a spent force. He came back after the unanimous points defeat to uh, Frampton uh, in December, uh, uh, at the end of the year, with a second round stoppage win. This man's still got fire in his belly, still fancies it. So therefore, this is just a, a measuring stick to see the difference between Frampton and Quigg, to see how close they are, uh, to see who is the real deal. You never know, uh, Quigg might just walk straight through him and split him out, and he's not going to get credit for it because they're going to say, well, I beat him twice and he's passed it. And if he struggles with him, they're going to say, well, I beat him twice, I stopped him once and smashed him for 12 rounds the other time. So he's on a no-win situation, he's just got to get rid but do it in style. It's not just about the win, it's about mm. how he wins. That's what's most important. Mm. I mean, yeah, Scott Quigg, like I said, there's always been this thing around Scott Quigg and the, the whole WBA situation. Because Rigondo's a super champion, is Scott Quigg really the world champion in, for the WBA? What are, what's your thoughts on all that? I think what's happened is Scott has not had that defining fight. Yeah. We saw Jay McDonnell box uh, in Texas. I think that was his defining fight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and so Scott just hasn't had a defining fight. Mm. Whereas maybe, maybe... 
uh, Frampton's defining fight was against Martinez. That was his defining because it was a tough fight, uh, and and he got through it. He, he Which one, job. the first or the second? <coughs> um, I think the first one. Hmm. The first one was ju the second one was just stamping his authority on someone he'd already beaten. Scott's just not had one. Scott Quick's just not had a defining. He needs one. I don't think this will be it. I think this will put him close to it. Um, and I know he's a frustrating individual. He's, you know, he wants the big fights. This guy was up half past five this morning, swimming. You know, he, he lives in the gym. He lives the life. And you get that. I get that. Uh, but I do think uh, he's just looking for that fight that quenches his thirst. Hmm. But I mean, there was all this talk of Quig Frampton, Eddie Hearn, with the 1.5 million, yeah. and the two parties not being able to agree a deal. That wasn't a good situation, was no, it? it that we didn't get to see this listen, fight listen, that we've wanted we, for we so long. Before these guys became world champions, we were promised you get, get the world title. Well, let's put it together. We we'll hear the noise from from Eddie. We we'll hear the noise from Quig. We we'll hear the noise from Frampton. Who and where's the stumbling block? You know who and where's the stumbling block? So it's not the fighters. The fighters want the game. Want want the fight. It's the people behind. Uh, uh, the fighters that are, that are stopping us from getting the fight. We were promised a long time ago. This fight should have happened a long time ago. You know, if all parties really wanted this fight, would have been happened, or we'd be penciling a date right now. But instead, you know, for some reason, or some some section of individuals, or or, or, or making us wait for what? What do you make us wait for? You've got we've got two world champions. It's a big fight. Build it up. Get there. A lot of people have got the, what they've got to say about the belt situation. It is very confusing for for. People like who follow boxing constantly as their people as, who don't their follow job. boxing saying, "Well, are you world champion, are you world yeah. champion," and that's but, what messes this game up. But we've got to remember the other day that Tamiki Kamida relinquished his title with the WBO to fight for Jane McDonald's yeah. what is called as a regular title, so he could fight for that. I mean, it's a shame that both belts weren't on the line. Well, well, you're talking more Floyd Mayweather's talking about giving up the belts. Yeah. You know, and so really, it's now. It's, I'm glad these things are happening now because. It's now about, let's not fool the public and make up all these silly bouts. How about all of them? <laughs> all these silly bouts. And it doesn't make you a world champion. You know, when you beat the best in the world, that's what makes you a world champion. Mm. Uh, and, and, and so I, what Floyd, I hope Floyd does do it to, to say, look, I don't need these bouts to, 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 for me to be recognised as the best in the world. I met these guys work in line with each other. Uh, the WBO may not recognise the WBA champion, the WBA champion may not recognise the WBC champion. It's silliness, and it's not doing our sport any favours at all. They've got to work together. This is one of those silly situations where you've got two world champions that really should be forced to, to, to be put together to, to make them fight each other. But no, it's just the politics of the, of the game are, are killing it. And, uh, and now it's got to the point where people want to demand demand these fights to take place, the governing bodies push these fighters together and say, right, he's your number one, he's your number two, you two fight each other and do it that way. Hmm. What belts did you hold again? WBU, WBF, heavyweight. Well, WBU, you? WBF, that no one really considers exactly. belts. Exactly, and it's one of those three belts. We <laughs> believe you belt, I called it. As soon as I won it, I thought, I ain't never winning champion. I no, gave, what were the proper belts I gave you won? You won out. proper belts, didn't you? I, I drew for the WBC or WB, I can't remember which one it was. Won the WBO. Uh, but I've had all the belts, man. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you just think, to me, I thought I was one of the few champs that thought I was the best in the world at Cruiserweight. Hmm. So it didn't matter what belt I had. And, and, and that's just how it is. And I think you these fights here, Cruiserweight? I was Ring Magazine, number one Cruiserweight, at one point. Ring right. Magazine, that's... <laughs> yeah. Take note of that. You didn't know that, did you? Take, take Check take it out. That. Go yeah. on, do your research. It's like David Hay was undisputed Cruiserweight, wasn't he? So? I'm just saying. Hey, hey would have smashed you in his... Are you stupid? Yeah, you in your prime... You were smoking rum, man. You were smoking rum. No, you in your prime, you at your best, hey at his best at cruiserweight, <laughs> he would have stopped you within like four or five rounds. Yeah, I'll I tell think. you what would happen. He'd have run round dizzy, dizzy, got frustrated, looked to, to, to Adam Booth and said, you know, what's this? Boom. <laughs> Ow. Hey. That's how I get him. Bored him to death, frustrated him, pam, sneak one in. That's too fast. Bored him to death. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I never said I was an exciting fighter. No, I, I just said I was a winner. Listen, you've done well. You've landed on your feet on the sky, haven't you? And let, and, and let me just let, and let me just say, Floyd Mayweather is not an exciting fighter. Muhammad Ali was not, was not an exciting fighter, but they were successful in what they did. So if you're a purist, you appreciate what these fighters did. It's boxing, hitting, and not being hit. If you want to see a Mike Andre Tyson, Ward, Rigondo. You see it there? So you've okay. got fighters that can fight, that are excellent boxers, but aren't exciting. They'll not be the richest in the world, bar Floyd Mayweather, but or they're most exciting, but they might be the most successful. Okay, I'll go along with that. I'll go along with that. So, so, 
I'm just telling you, when I went for Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather, the only reason why I went for Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather is because I thought he'd have pace. In a million years, I didn't think he'd beat him boxing ability-wise. In a million years, I didn't think technically he was more supreme than Mayweather. I just thought his pace would be too much for Mayweather. Stupid me, I should have known better. I got it wrong again. You get it, you get it wrong every now and again. And again. And again. All right. All right. Finally, Canelo Alvarez. Yeah who knocked out James Kirkland on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, going back to Canelo Mayweather, could we disregard that fight? No. Him? No, because Mayweather's made to look, all his opponents look average. But, 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 but before that fight, everybody said, this is a crazy fight for Mayweather to take, that Canelo is young, he's hungry, he's strong, he's like a bull, you know, and, and Mayweather took it and just shut, shut up. That, so that should just tell us, we've got to put Mayweather way, way up there yeah. on that pedestal to say, no matter who you fight, whoever, who he fights, he's like top dog, no matter what. And I, I just can't see anybody out there, I'm this form, dealing with him. I think when he boxed Maidana the first time, it was one of those occasions where he thought, it's an easy fight. And still didn't box to the best of his ability and won. When this guy's on it, you know, he can't be beaten. He lives in the gym, he lives the life. That's what fighters should do. Hmm. Do you think Carl Fox will retire? Yeah. Do you think he should retire? Yeah. I think, I think Carl Foch can never achieve anything more than he has, more than he has done. He 80,000 people in front of, uh, in front of 85,000 people at Wembley Stadium. Do you remember him telling you that? Do you remember him boxing in front of 80,000 people at Wembley Stadium? Did he? No. I think he did. I didn't know that until he told, told Floyd. I didn't know. That was the first time because I was just underneath there. And I heard him you, say to him, Floyd, I don't you. know if you know in, that. You know. In Carl's defence... He does that to wind people up. He's he a clever guy, right? And he, he chuckles to himself after he's done it. So when anybody slags him down on Twitter and stuff like that, he's loving it because he's thinking, I'm doing it on purpose. One, to get at George Grove to say, yeah, I'm just reminding you that I smashed you in front of 80,000 people. Two, to wind everybody up. Carl's a cool guy. Don't give him stick. The guy is funny. He's, he's on it. You know, he's, he's an average Joe and he's just a cool guy. I don't think he boxes again. I think he thinks, you know what, I've done it. Unless it's in my terms and I get what I want. He offered Andre Ward a fight to come to Nottingham. Everybody's saying, well, why don't you go to Andre Ward? He had to go to Andre Ward before, so why shouldn't Andre Ward come and box him here in Nottingham? Uh, Carl's the champion. Andre Ward's been out for so long. Mm. I get where Carl's coming from. And I'm not kissing his ass. What I'm saying is I hear where he's coming from. Mm. So I don't think he fights again because he can't... You've got to get motivated to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning to go training. And if there's nobody out there to put you, uh, to give that fear in your belly, to make you want to do that, I would do the same. Mm. I, when I was supposed to box uh, Enzo Macronelli, I was going to retire straight after that because there was nobody in the division that put that fear in me, that, that, that made me want to get up to, to train. Mm. So I get where Carl's coming from. So I ease off him. Just need a bit of advice for you. I'm thinking of having a fight. Don't do it. And like, I've been doing a lot of swimming and like Don't chopping do it, trees down and stuff like Don't that. Do like, You're a good guy. Did you work on that? Like, yeah. Did you work on that before in your fights? Yeah. Like chopping trees down, swimming work on the power because I'm going. not known as a I don't know I'm not known as a, a single punch knockout gonna, person but I know I'm going to walk but into <laughs> something here but I don't know where you go with this but yeah I did a lot of swimming you did a lot of tree, tree chopping I didn't do a lot of tree chropping no oh, that's not that's not good you want me to say yes so you're going to set me up with something <laughs> like, like I did a lot of swimming a lot of cycling uh, a lot of uh, good for the power a lot of uh, a lot of stretching as in as in uh, 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 yoga and I lived in the gym oh. bow look at all all right, Johnny Nelson, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Yeah, you, right. you got anything else to say? Nothing. Nothing? Oh.